It is a Wednesday night on Mark Rogers TV. That means we're talking Alabama football with Stephen M. Smith from Touchdown Alabama. Please join him there for the best in a tide coverage, every sport included. Stephen, how you doing tonight? Doing good. I just got finished watching the uh, the NBA Finals. Uh, Golden State got the win there. Kevin Durant getting the MVP. Steph Curry still being Steph Curry. And LeBron, despite averaging that triple-double throughout the Finals, LeBron uh, – could not get Cleveland that second title. Well, LeBron maybe have had uh, a little bit more of the burden to to shoulder compared to Kevin Durant. A little bit more responsibility. Pretty much uh, thirty seconds of uh, time on the bench for LeBron per game. Uh, had quite a bit to do. Had the ball in his hands most of the time. So not necessarily a fair fight there. But uh, once KD joined the Warriors, uh, they were in great shape to to wrap up the title, and Cleveland gave it a go. But uh, didn't quite have the firepower. Now you talk about talent uh, and you talk about a winning formula, front seven, front four in particular in college football is required. It's a must have if you're going to win championships and especially in the SEC. And Alabama certainly had the guns up front. And let's talk about uh, what they have coming into 2017, Stephen. So we go through this drill every year. We talk about the production lost, and maybe this year a little bit more significant than what it's been in the past. We've talked about the tackles for loss and the sack production lost off this team in 2016. That's so remarkable that they'll have to make up for. Jonathan Allen gone uh, from the stellar group of, up front, along with a guy that you love in Dalvin Tomlinson, who had 62 tackles, and Dakota Ball, who chipped in. So, Talk about the transition of some of these other guys stepping in, uh, uh, led by Deshaun Hand. Uh, Deshaun Hand and Deron Payne, two five stars, are going to be the leaders on this defensive line next season. Deshaun Hand, we all remember, a five star recruit from Woodbridge, Virginia, in that 2014 signing class. Everybody expected big things from him. He it, it took him a moment to get stronger in the weight room, to get more sound on the field and also to study more game film to learn how to play at that defensive end position. Of course, of course, he watched quite a bit of Jonathan Allen a season ago and during the 2015 season. So uh, Deshaun Hand, a big, big year expected from him, but also Deron Payne coming into his junior year out of uh, Shades Valley High School in Birmingham, Alabama, already one of the strongest players on the team. He's got a pretty quick, quick 40 time, very loud on his feet, but can also pressure from the inside, something that Nick Saban had been working on with him all throughout last season. And Dalvin Tomlinson also helping Deron Payne with pressuring from the inside, using those hands to get offensive linemen off of you and attacking the quarterback, but also creating those tackles for loss in the running game in the backfield. So Deshaun Hand. Deron Payne, the two that I played a lot of football, will be counted on very so much this year. But some guys that will be looked at also would be uh, Quinn Williams, the redshirt freshman coming in next season. A lot of people comparing him to Jonathan Allen, Quinn Williams, uh, young man out of Winona High School in Birmingham, Alabama, at 6'4", 284 pounds. And along with him, you've got Raekwon Davis, uh, Joshua Frazier, the young man from Springdale, Arkansas, who's shown some flashes, but Alabama wanted to see more consistency from him. And then there's Johnny Dwight. Alabama also having some guys from the 2017 class, JUCO transfer, Isaiah Bugs from Mississippi Gulf Community College, also LeBron Ray and Phil Mathis, who also came to that 2017 class. So Bama has got some guys to play with to rotation around, but it all starts with Deron Payne and Deshaun Hand, two guys that have played a ton of football at the Capstone thus far. I was looking at some uh, statistics, uh, not in terms of sackles, tackles for loss, and uh, so forth, and sacks, but looking at these guys and what they can do in the weight room, Stephen, and I know you, you are well aware of this, Deshaun Hand uh, squatting, 545 or 635 and benching 545. I see a bugs his his uh, numbers from the Juco ranks almost as impressive. So these these guys are are men showing up uh on the D 
defensive line here. Scott Cochran, that, that's tribute to uh, strength and conditioning coach Scott Cochran. If you remember his interview, Mark, on 60 Minutes uh, some years back, he was asked on what does he bring to the table as a strength and conditioning coach, and Scott Cochran made the famous remark, I don't do nothing. They come in full-blooded Lamborghinis. I just put spinners on them. So that was Scott Cochran's favorite. That was Scott Cochran's famous uh, quote there. He continues to put spinners, you know, on these guys, putting the finishing polish on these boys when it comes down to uh, the workout routine, the nutrition regiment, and just keeping these guys in top physical condition. Some of these uh, guys that are coming in from the 2017 signing class, uh, of course, have the 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 many stars next to their names. Do, do you expect any of these guys talking about LeBron Ray out of Madison, Alabama, number one defensive uh, end on the weak side there, uh, Fidarian Mathis out of Louisiana, top 10 defensive tackle, and uh, Jerez Parks, any of those guys out of Sebastian, Florida, uh, they could possibly break into the rotation? I definitely see uh, Phil Mathis and LeBron Ray, and LeBron Ray more in particular because of his prowess on that end side, being able to rush the quarterback. And it's something that Nick Saban prides himself more so on now, but in recent years, if you go back to the earlier seasons of Nick Saban, we're talking 2008, 2009, 2010, and so forth, probably up to that 2014 year in particular, Alabama wasn't much, wasn't really known for having those guys on the outside that could consistently rush the passer with an edge to them and constantly have that speed and that edge twitching, edge bending ability. And then you bring in a, a Ryan Anderson and a Tim Williams that brought both of those things to the table. And also Jonathan Allen from a defensive end perspective that brought that to the table. So saving more so now and getting these guys that can help get you 240 and 50-plus sacks a season. Back then it was you had to blitz a defensive back. You had to blitz a corner. You had to blitz a safety because Alabama was recruiting the big, hulky guys on the line, but not the ones that had the quick footwork or the ones that had the best hand technique and firing off the football and getting to the quarterback. Now that you're getting a mixture of guys that not just have the size, but the footwork, the hands, the skill set, the mindset, all of it coming together, it pays to have those guys in getting to the quarterback so you can produce those 40 to 50 plus sacks a year. So that's why I'm saying more so a Brian Ray than a Phil Mathis. But I think having all these guys on the defensive line are important, Mark, because outside of linebacker, where Saban just recruits freak athletes and signs six to seven guys at linebacker each and every year, it doesn't matter if you have a two-star, three-star, four-star, or five-star on the defensive line, when somebody has to come out for a breather, when somebody has to come out for a play or a group of guys have to come out, you have to have those next wave of bodies come in and provide the same type of production. 